एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू अनदर सेशन बाय के ट्वेंटी वन अकेडमी एंड टुडे आवर एक्सपर्ट ट्रेनर विल बी गिविंग यू एन इंट्रोडक्शन टू डेटा इंजीनियरिंग ऑन अजोर सो वॉच द वीडियो टिल एंड इंट्रोडक्शन टू डेटा इंजीनियरिंग ऑन एजोर वॉट इज डेटा इंजीनियरिंग डेटा इंजीनियरिंग इज एन एक्सट्रीमली डाइवर्सिफाइड जॉब प्रोफाइल डेटा इंजीनियर्स आर जॉब प्रोफेशनल्स द प्रोफेशनल्स हु आर masters all the entire data platform stack meaning that you need to have thorough understanding of the entire data platform stack on the cloud platform and when we look at any data stack we always look at the data stack in terms of structured semi structured and unstructured data processing solutions structured data means data that can fit very nicely into tables that is rows and columns a schema can be enforced that are the column names and the data types of the columns are tightly enforced that's called a schema at right you cannot insert a row into a table if you do not insert the data in the correct data type of the column data type is also called as the domain of the column because it is the domain from which the data is obtained for that column structured data also is sometimes referred to as relational data right relational data meaning the data that has relations rows of one table may be related to the rows of another table using something called as referential integrity foreign key relationships and structured data is very clean it is easy to deal with and typically when we present that is reporting visualizations and reporting like people who do power bi and all those different tools power bi tapping so when we do reporting and visualizations we typically prefer using structured data solutions structured data right really it is also sometimes referred to as the relational data because of a very simple fact that rows of one table might be related to the rows of another table using primary key and foreign key relationships that are called as referential integrity you use those constraints in your data warehouses as well your dimension tables are related to your fact tables using such relationships you also enforce such relationships limited relationships active relationships inactive relationships in your power bi modeling as well when you do reporting a structured data is also used for oltp in which you have transactional processing you have concurrency locking blocking serialization lock escalation transaction isolation it's a very nice world right the structured data now the data engineer must be able to work with structured data sources like azure sql database azure sql managed instances sql server virtual machine azure database for postgres sql server flexible azure database for mysql flexible azure database for maria azure database for postgres sql citus which means you must be able to make sense out of these products typically it is the domain of rdbms expert that is sql admin sql administrators to have detailed understanding of those products how to deploy them how to provision them how to configure them how to operate them how to do performance tuning how to do high availability and disaster recovery configuration how to do query tuning right how to do automation of performance tasks all those detailed administrative works are the domain of a sql administrator and there is a specialization for that dp300 in which we discuss about the relational rdbms expertise but what is the role of a data engineer the data engineer must be able to provision and configure these products as well it must not be that i only deal with lakes it's not that we must be able to work with structured data as well similarly we have semi structured data like javascript object notation documents you have your key value pairs you have column families white column families you have graphical data they all fall in the category of human readable semi structured data and there are various products on the azure platform that can deal with semi structured data and you have azure cosmos db you have azure storage account tables azure storage account tables that is used for semi structured data and 
Azure Cosmos DB is the king of the jungle, right? And there is a specialization for that also. That is the semi-structured data processing, Cosmos DB specialization. And then you also have unstructured data sources like your PDF files, your Word files, your video files, right? You have different kinds of files which are unstructured in nature. And you can deal with such files. Typically, the data lake account or a blob account is essentially the storage layer for processing such, storing such data rather, the unstructured data. And once a data engineer understands the type of a source of the data, then they must be able to ingest via the orchestration tools this data into a data lake account. Ingestion, typically, you will use products like Data Factory for pipelines, copy pipelines, mapping data flow transformation pipelines, wrangling data flow, power query pipelines, and you have the orchestration dispatch activities in your pipeline. So the data engineers must be able to design highly efficient and effective pipelines in order to ingest the data. Once the data has been ingested into the lake, it must be organized appropriately. So developing the hierarchy of the lake is again a very crucial task that is the core job profile of a data engineer. That as per the business requirements, how to partition the folders in the lake, how to design the folder strategy, folders and files and partitions in your lake, what kind of file formats to leverage, right? Delimited or processed file formats like Avro, Parquet, RC, ORC, CRC. What kind of formats to use and how to organize that data in the lake. And then the natural question is to protect this data using role-based access control configurations, right? And the ACL, that is the access control list. And obviously, when such a data operation, which is called as integration is performed, that's called the data integration. You are trying to integrate your data assets assets into a single location, which is your data lake. Then we clearly understand a very simple fact that data assets are not ready for downstream applications as it is. You will rarely find data assets in the, in the real world, which are in the form and a shape that you need for downstream applications. Some form of transformations are also always needed. You need to do exploratory data analytics. You need to look at the central tendency measures like mean, median, mode. You need to look at the measures of dispersion, like you need to see the variance, standard deviation, kurtosis, skewness, quartiles. Right. You need to understand that whether the data needs cleansing, whether the data needs normalization, whether the data needs scaling, whether data needs correlation study, right? Are there various columns in your data which are already correlated? Then there is no need to keep multiple data points, multiple columns in the data if they are already correlated with each other. You need to understand imputation, whether you need to fill in the data, missing value imputations. You need to essentially carry out transformations. You may have to stringify your data. You may have to vectorize your data. You may have to encode your data into numerical features. So what I typically try to emphasize is that when we use any data asset for downstream applications, it needs transformations. And a data engineer must be able to leverage various services for such transformations of Big data volume, products like Azure Databricks, which provides the Spark clusters, more precisely DVR clusters, right? Where we can do machine learning, where we can do graphical processing, structured data frame processing, and structured streaming processing. That's one of the solutions for transformation. And typically, you find data engineers learning products like PySpark, .sql, or data frame API, right? Data frame API, that's what. Similarly, Data engineers, you see them learning MLLib API also for transformations, like stringifications, vectorizations, encodings, scaling, normalization, and things like that. Similarly, products like Synapse Analytics falls into that domain of transformation. Not only transformation, but all of those operations. It has capability to do integration, transformation, and consolidation of the data. Consolidation is a phase after transformation. Once you have transformed your data assets, and let me emphasize one very crucial fact that if a data engineer is supporting a business intelligence solution, 
then what are the transformations needed? Aggregation and summarization is what we are looking for. If it is a BI solution, business integrity solution. So we're going to ask questions like total sales, average profit growth, right? Average profit growth month on month, average profit growth year on year, average profit growth quarter on quarter, month offsets, year offsets, quarter offsets. We will be asking such questions. Aggregations. Aggregations along dimensions. Dimensions of time, dimensions of any other dimension. It could be city. Report to me the quarterly sales per city. Mumbai, Bangalore, Delhi, Ahmedabad, right? San Francisco, New York, whatever. Report to me across the cities. Report to me across the verticals, product categories, right? So it could be any sort of business intelligence, but it will be typically aggregations and summarize. And the natural phase after transformation, that is what you do after transformation, is to consolidate your findings and present them via the serving layer. That's called the serving layer. And for a business intelligence solution, a BI solution, what is the serving layer? Data warehouse and data marts. Data warehouses and data marts. What are they? They are essentially the serving layer, consolidation layer of your business intelligence solution. So, data engineers must be able to work with multiple types of data sources, must be able to ingest them either as a batch operation or as a real-time ingestion using tools like Kafka Topics, Kafka Clusters, Event Hubs, Event Grid, Service Bus, and then perform a variety of operations on top of them using a range of tools. And obviously, scripting languages are what they are master of. SQL is like structured query language. It's just like breath. Without water, we may survive for a few days. Without food, we may survive for a month, maybe even. Right? But without air, there's no one who can survive. Right? Right? Even if the person is fasting for months, right? In some religious cultures, people are found to fast for months. Continuously for months, right? Which means monks and all those uh, people, right? Without air, nobody can survive, right? That's impossible, right? So it's like SQL, structured query language. Without SQL, it's nearly impossible to make any sense out of any kind of a data professionalism. Right? So basic SQL, everyone learns. Nowadays, we know that it is taught in schools as well. 11th standard, 12th standard, the SQL, right? And this is a very popular language, Dr. E.F. called IBM 1972. So it's a very olden language. It's a declarative language. Now the modern language, which is very versatile, very diverse, right? Has a lot of extensible libraries and packages available for various kinds of tasks is Python. Very easy to learn. It's a dynamically typed language. Syntax is very easy, terse, and less verbose. It's not too much of those braces and whatnot that you see in languages like Java, C Sharp, C++. It's a very simple language. It's very easy to learn language. And typically, newer professionals, people who are entering this domain, they find it an easy approach using Python. So you learn tools like pyspark.sql.dataframeAPI, which is that spark session.read, which is the data frame reader object. So you create your data frames and then you process those data frames using the Spark language. Other options are also there which are more domain specific, right? Which are more domain specific like Scala, R, Java, .NET. So depending on your comfortability with the programming exposure, you can use any language. All languages are going to run with the same efficiency on the Spark platform. It's not that Java is given more preference than Python. It's not like that. Earlier it was, but now it is not. So all languages will run uh, with a similar efficiency. The engine is optimized to uh, process your source code in any language that you write. So that's not a big deal. Primarily, SQL and Python are the most crucial 
languages for a data engineer, right? And Python is so versatile that if you want to move from data engineering to data sciences, right? If you want to move towards predictive data modeling, machine learning and deep learning, you'll find that language everywhere, right? That's very, very versatile language and it's a fully extensible language supported through community, right? Obviously, the benevolent dictator of life, Buddha von Rasam, who invented it. It's a very beautiful language. So guys, this was our expert from Team K21 Academy. And if in case you want to have a deeper dive, then we have something really special for you. We have our free class on Azure Data Engineer for Data Engineer Jobs. And if you want to register for the same, then you just have to visit k21academy.com forward slash dp20302. You'll be seeing this kind of interface. Just click on book your free seat now. Select an event date. Enter your full name, your email address, your phone number and click on yes, save my seat. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of URL on the extreme right. Save that URL, add it to your calendars and I'll see you in the free class.